Hey guys, Ryan here. And are you sick of being the last one alive on your squad and then you get nervous, you feel like the pressure is too much, you feel like you can't do anything and you have no chance and it just feels pointless? Because I want to help with that, I want to fix that, and I promise I have three tips that can almost instantly help. So let's get into the first one. And this is going to be that you need to have the mindset that around every corner is death. Let's focus on this clip in the background. Notice how around all these corners, I'm going to try and pre-aim around it, and I'm going to try and clear my corners. And if I do peek it, I'm not going to sprint, I'm going to slide cancel. The second thing is focus on how often I'm pre-aiming and how close I stay to cover and to the corner I just came around. One of the big things people don't account for is if you get put in a bad situation and you can't win the gunfight, you need to break their line of sight and get to safety as quick as possible. And the easiest way to do this is by positioning yourself before it becomes a problem. The third thing is by playing corners properly, you can get intel and get back to safety like you're going to see me do right now. I come around the corner, I saw the guy because I stayed close to it, I had a chance to play it up, now I know where he's at and how to play the situation. Lastly, if you're the last one alive, or if you're solo battling a whole squad by yourself, you need to get the mathematical advantage, and that's what this does. By pre-aiming, you're going to have the obvious mathematical advantage, but the other reason is slide canceling versus sprinting. Every time you sprint and try and aim down sight, you get what's called the sprint to fire time. And this is a natural time between, and it's usually about 100 to 200 milliseconds, where you can't fire your gun after you get done sprinting. So by eliminating the sprint to fire time with the slide cancel and by combining it with the pre-aim, you're going to be giving yourself such a big mathematical advantage, it cannot be understated. And this is going to bring us into our second topic, and this is going to be the art of isolating 1v1s. So first things first guys, is the idea of trigger discipline. So watch this, I'm gonna get intel on the whole squad right now before I even fire a single bullet. And then I'm gonna probably even honestly mess up by firing that. I'm gonna get a free kill on this guy who is probably AFK, cause you know, you just saw him float down without moving. Pretty sure he's just AFK and came back right before I killed him. But what you're gonna notice is I'm gonna reposition. They're gonna see me, my high alert is gonna tell me that they have eyes on me the entire time I'm repositioning, but I'm gonna make sure that I don't take the fight from the exact same position I just was. And also this is the key part. So I'm gonna drop an airstrike on them as I see them rotating, and this is gonna help set up all of these 1v1s. So the first thing first is I know I need to get a pick. If there's three people coming for me, I have to find a way to get at least one person down before they engage me. The second thing is watch how I'm playing close to corners the whole time and how I'm always just staying near cover. And by using cover and by staying close to it, I can play, I can get intel, and I can isolate the 1v1s. This is a whole squad of three. They're pretty good players. I mean, this guy's got a CDL skin. He's jumping around. He's got good movement. He's a good player, but it didn't matter because I played it the proper and right way. And you're going to see that in this next clip as well. So the only reason this play succeeds is because I'm going to do a nice little zip line jump to isolate the 1v1 on this player and avoid all of the people up top. If I were to just go up the zip line the normal way, I would have died. But then watch how I play this because I'm also going to make a huge mistake that I want to show. So I see this one player, I'm going to start getting shots and then I'm going to find cover. And watch how I'm always going to be hugging cover. No matter where I am, I'm focusing on being in cover. And what I'm also trying to do is isolate 1v1s by horizontal and vertical line of sights. By focusing on not overexposing myself and blocking off lines of sight from other people, I can isolate these 1v1s and get kills. But then what do I do? I don't get behind cover and around the corner. And look what happens, costing me my 40 bomb, like no. But admittedly, that's not the only way to isolate 1v1s. So what you're seeing in the background is an example of using high ground and third parties to essentially force 1v1s. They aren't even actually 1v1s because these people aren't shooting at me. They're two squads battling it out. That guy's getting shot at. This guy's running from the circle. I'm just sitting here. It's like shooting crabs in a barrel. And that is another way to quote unquote isolate 1v1s. There's two ways of doing it. One, when you're in the middle of 1v3s and I showed you in the first couple clips, but there's also examples of that where you're playing the high ground, you're playing third parties, you're understanding how to actually manipulate your positioning in a macro sense and not just a micro sense. But remember guys, if you don't want to die, like you're going to watch me do and choke your whole cool 40 bomb game, you got to get around those corners. And that's what I'm going to talk about here in this third clip. One way or another, you need to make an advantage for yourself. This is the one thing people seem to get wrong when they watch me play solo quads or just my general play style. 
I'm not trying to pick fights where I'm not at an advantage. I'm not trying to pick fights where they have the advantage over me. And in fact, the whole way my gameplay revolves around is by, by trying to continuously get an advantage on my opponents. And I'm gonna do this in a ton of different ways. I'm gonna do this by focusing on getting things like high ground in a macro sense and by using UAVs. But then on a micro sense, I'm gonna do that by continuously going in and out of cover, by playing close to cover so I can always play it up and get my centering right and abuse peeker's advantage and all of these little things. It's it's about making all these micro advantages for yourself and that's why I talked about in the first part things like pre-aiming and avoiding the sprint to fire time because you may not realize it but Warzone is a game of milliseconds. Every little millisecond is going to add up. Every little second and millisecond you can get to be an advantage in your favor is going to be the difference oftentimes between you dying and you going on to fry and get a nice 20 kill game and you may think I'm kidding but I am not. And this is going to lead me into my last big point of this whole video. And I'm not going to give it a cool little title like I usually do because I always consider these the bonus tips. But let me explain. This is a long term thing, guys. You got to accept failure. You got to go out there and understand, yeah, I'm going to be in a 1v3. I'm going to be in a 1v4 and I'm going to die sometimes. But I'm going to use that as a tool. I'm going to use that as a thing that's going to propel me to being a better player, to learning from all this. And I'm going to look at what I did wrong. I'm going to observe the mistakes and I'm going to get better. All the things I talked about in this video, this is the blueprint. But when you hop on, you're not going to be able to instantly implement it. It's not just going to instantly happen for you. It's going to take time to execute all these little things. And guess what, guys? You know what? you don't see all the times it doesn't work for me and all the times I failed and all the times I looked like a fool and I just didn't go well for myself because yeah that's what the whole point of a YouTube video is I edit all that stuff out you guys get to see all the cool things I did when I played that day you don't get to see all the bad games that stuff doesn't show up when I run into a whole squad of sweats and they stack too good for me and they just overran me and killed me well that's not in the YouTube video but all of those failures those are the things that propelled me to getting to this point. When I make a cool play, oftentimes there's not a lot to learn from it. Yeah, it's cool to go back and watch and put it in the YouTube video, but it doesn't make me a better player. And that's what you have to realize. Don't be afraid of failing. So when you're in that last situation, you're the last one alive on your squad and you feel that pressure, don't. I mean, it's okay to be nervous. Don't be nervous, but don't think about it. Don't be stressing. Focus on the game because if you start thinking in yourself, oh my God, I'm nervous. I'm not going to be able to play well. Like, I, I don't want to ruin this for my team or, oh, I'm not going to win the 1v3, yada, yada. How are you going to clutch up? You need to be thinking to yourself, all right, I see this guy over here. I need to get around cover. I see that guy over there. Okay, he's going to be on the right side of me. So I need to make sure that when I play cover, I don't overexpose myself to the right side. You need to be thinking about those things. But if you're thinking to yourself, oh my God, I'm the last one alive. Everyone's going to think I'm a fool if I miss these shots or there's no way I can win this 1v1. Or if you're just playing scared and you know, you're just sitting there nervous, it doesn't work out like that, guys. Your thoughts have to be right. You have to have the right train of thought. You have to be focused on the right things. And you have to just accept that, hey, it's not going to happen overnight. Rome wasn't built in a day. Ryan wasn't built in a day. And neither were you. And I know that's such a cheesy saying, but I love saying it. Anyways, guys, it's been Ryan. I hope you enjoy the video. Peace.